Welcome everyone, it is Andrew from Apple Insider. WatchOS 5 is a major update for the Apple Watch. It supports all Apple models other than the original Apple Watch. We've gone ahead and installed it on our Apple Watch and we're going to walk you through over 65 new features and changes here in WatchOS. Starting off, let's go ahead and talk about watch faces. One of the best watch faces that came with WatchOS 4 was the Siri watch face, and it is way beefed up here in WatchOS 5. It is way smarter than it ever has been in the past. It supports way more data sources, including activity, now playing, photos, podcasts, reminders, home, just so many, and we don't need to go through them all, but it'll also work with third-party data sources as well. There's also an entirely new color. You saw the gray one and we have the colorful one. So there are multiple color schemes now for that Siri watch face. In only the few days of testing this out, it is pretty awesome. I love having my, my home kit scenes automatically show up there at the right times, routes to tra take me back home and maps, and so much more. It's way more intuitive than it ever has been. The solar watch face has added a new complication. So now there are two, one at the top and one at the bottom makes it a little bit more usable. I really love complications and I love the solar watch face, but it was a bit of a bummer being limited just to one complication on there. The last watch face to get an update is the photos watch face. The photos watch face now actually can support photo memories. So those memories that show up on your iPhone, those can now show up here right on the photos watch face. It's pretty awesome. I really like it. If you like looking at your photos a lot, which I'm sure you do, then those memories and pre-selected photos can show up right here on your Apple watch. The one thing that we didn't see, however, in watch OS five was custom watch faces. You're still stuck with all the default ones that Apple builds in. There's no developer support or anything like that. The only thing there kind of is, is developer support for that Siri watch face. But that's really the only thing that's going to change other than those small tweaks to the existing watch faces. While we are looking at the watch faces though, this is a good time to mention a new complication that's been added. Jump over there, scroll down. We now have one for podcasts. That's right, because Podcast is now an entirely new app on the Apple Watch. So you can add that right on there onto your watch face. It's really handy if you listen to a lot of podcasts. Give yourself a little shortcut to get right into the app. As I mentioned, Apple Podcast is here on the Apple Watch. There's really a lot to love if you like podcasts. It allows you to stream over Wi-Fi and LTE. You can go straight to your Bluetooth headphones or your AirPods, or you can send it over to a speaker. So it's really handy to listen to alone on your Apple Watch or it can also now control what's playing on your iPhone, very similar to how Apple Music works. They did a really good job on the podcast app. Very simple, very functional, and lots of options there. So any podcast lovers can going to be very happy to have this because otherwise the third-party options for podcast apps on the Apple Watch just have been a little bit weak, especially using background audio, also new in watchOS 5. Taking a look at a few of the other stock apps that come with your Apple Watch, starting with weather. You can now just tap on the weather right along the top there to alternate the different metrics that you're looking at. If you force touch right in the middle there, it'll allow you to delete that city. Scrolling down, there is now air quality. There is now UV index. There is wind speed and the wind direction. And the 10 day forecast has moved down here. Before it used to be behind that force touch. Now it's just down below on the list. A little bit easier to get to if people don't know to use that force touch. You can also add a city right here from the weather app using dictation or scribble. We saw a few of these similar changes across other system apps in the Apple Watch. For instance, if we move over to the world clock, that one also allows you to actually delete a city by force touching in the center or adding a new city. So just becoming a little bit more independent from the iPhone, allowing you to do some of those similar things that you have to rely on your iPhone on to do right here on the Apple Watch. The last app that we saw these changes in is the Stocks app. The Stocks app, by the way, if you didn't know, got a bunch of makeovers. It is now over on Mac OS. It is now on the iPad and on the iPhone. It got a big redesign. So a lot to love for the Stocks app if that's something that you check regularly. And on the iPhone, you're now able to add new stocks. Though that did not seem to be here. Apple did mention it during the keynote. So hopefully that'll come in maybe the next beta. Um, force touching still brings up those different metrics. But if you go into a particular company's um, metrics here you can tap on it with force touch and delete it so you don't have to follow that company any longer if you don't want to backing it up to our main list of apps and scrolling up the list to messages there are a few new changes in the texting application 
For instance, there is now a new UI for things like dictation, scribble, emoji, sticker picker, digital touch, and Apple Pay. You can see this laid out a little bit differently. There's a lot of categories here. There are only two ways to swipe just left and right there, getting rid of a lot of confusion and clutter that was there before. So if we take a look just to compare it, if you don't have an Apple Watch on hand to check it out, comparing it to what it looked like in watchOS 4, just a little bit different, a little bit bigger. Scribble and Apple Pay were really large there. Jumping in to look at something like Emoji specifically, there's a lot going on here. There's all these different ways. Oop, went into Apple Pay on accident. Going into Emoji specifically, you can see there's five, four different windows to swipe across here. The categories are not sorted well it's just a whole lot nicer here on watch os 5. one new feature that we're really excited to try out but did not get the chance to is walkie talkie it is a brand new app but it just doesn't exist yet it still says coming soon we're really early on in this beta process but this basically allows you to chat in real time with friends and family literally like a walkie talkie pick it up talk go back and forth really really awesome real-time communication the wallet app will now support student IDs, same as over on iOS. FaceTime, which is not an app by itself here on the Apple Watch, but you can answer FaceTime calls. Really, really awesome to be able to answer FaceTime call on your watch, audio only, and then when you get to a good spot or you're able to sit down, pop it over to the video mode over on your iPhone, iPad, or your Mac. As Apple continues to put their weight behind health features, both physical health and digital health, it is no surprise that we saw a lot of improvements to the workout app. We had a pair of new workout types added, and then for runners, there's quite a few new things. As you're on a run, you can get pace alerts letting you know how you're going. You can see your running milestones and your cadence all while you're working out. Workouts also has a much improved API, making it easier than ever for developers to get in and make apps that work with workouts and activity and of course the health app. We saw some small UI changes, for instance, swiping to the left, you can see these buttons are now more oval and before they were more circles, just a small tweak from where they were in watchOS 4. WatchOS 5 now allows you to compete with friends and family in week-long workout challenges. Try to best one another, you'll get custom coaching and other fun awards as you compete in these challenges. The new workout types include yoga and hiking. And now while things like yoga were a little bit there in the past, before it was more just a name. Now it's actually a full-on workout type and these will better accurately measure your stuff. For instance, while hiking, it really takes um, elevation into consideration, giving you more credit for those workouts. We also have reminders for starting and stopping workouts. It's really, really handy. Now you never have to worry about starting or stopping because it should be able to do it for you. And if you start it late, you can still get credit for the workout that you completed. Workouts are tied to activities and filling up those rings is something a lot of people really strive to do day in and day out. And there are a few small changes. So first up, we notice now flights climbed, which has always been measured, now shows up here right in the activity app by default. Also, the workouts show up there, but they were doing that in the past. There's also a slightly different UI. There's no more dark kind of backgrounds behind some of the elements. There is in the Apple Watch app or the activity app that corresponds with your Apple Watch over on your iPhone, a really beefed up awards tab. You can see a lot going on here, including those challenges. So as you complete those challenges, you can get custom awards. So all of your different badges and awards are now being stored here on your activity app on your iPhone. And it looks a lot nicer, a lot less cumbersome than it did in the past. The area or the app that probably got the most changes on all of watchOS though is probably settings. There's a ton of small little changes and tweaks and a lot of them go a good way to making the watch more independent and more useful and just more natural. So if we head into the settings app, first thing you're gonna notice is there's now a Wi-Fi option. That's right, before you could connect to Wi-Fi, but now you can specifically go in and choose the Wi-Fi network that you wanna to connect to or turn it off completely. Under do not disturb, it will prompt you when you do so to turn on calendar access. And when calendar access is enabled, you'll have a few different options for do not disturb that we saw over on iOS 12, including different amounts of time to schedule do not disturb for. Backing up and going down to general settings, if we look under wake screen, we have a new option that can be toggled on or off right there in the middle, which is wake screen on crown up. So whenever you lift up your digital crown, it'll go ahead and wake up your Apple Watch. There is now a new section for website data because website data can now be stored and cleared on your Apple Watch because there's actually web views 
on Apple Watch now. You can actually access websites if given through a message or something. You can view it, scroll down pages, and if you ever need to clear that website data, definitely doable here in the settings. There's a new option for Siri. You don't have to now say, hey Siri, to actually get her to do anything. You can just raise your wrist and speak into your Apple Watch. That is already kind of indication enough that you want to say anything. There's also the different option for voice feedback, always on, control with silent mode, or headphones only. And we have voice volume speaker, which is really handy. This is something I've been asking for for a while, being able to adjust the voice volume of Siri right here within settings. It'll also tell you the Siri voice, which should mirror what you see on your iPhone. Inside of workout, we have that start workout reminder and end workout reminder. Both of those are toggleable and features that we briefly talked about before. Super not exciting, but we also have much less regulatory information here in the Apple Watch compared to before. There's a few more in there last time, quite a few more actually, and it's been pared down just a little bit. Moving on to kind of the system-wide stuff, there's a few really cool things, especially having to do with notifications and control center. As we open notifications, you can see there's a little bit of a color change. It starts off gray before going into that black background. Comparing it to watchOS 4, as we pull down Notification Center, it stays black pretty much that whole time. It's also a lot more responsive and bouncy here on the new watchOS 5 compared to before. It was a little bit stiff when we were trying to use it on watchOS 4. Aside from just a slight look change in the background colors, we finally, finally, finally have grouped notifications. This is something that you can see easily over on iOS 12, but it is still here on watchOS 5, and it is wonderful. It is so nice, so much easier to manage these notifications. You can see I had a whole bunch coming in from TweetBot. I could just tap that whole group at one time. I can tap to clear all notifications, same as before. But we also have instant tuning here. So if I tap into a notification, perhaps my home notification, I don't really need to know that the bathroom apparently triggered something. So I can actually go ahead and force touch on that and tap manage. Now I have a couple of different options, including deliver quietly, which means they show up right in notification center, but they don't alert me about it. Or I can turn it off completely on the Apple Watch, but keep it over on my iPhone. So a couple of options to tune your notifications right on the spot without having to jump into settings or making anything complicated. There's also much more improved notifications. You can do a lot more right from them, like replying to them, checking in for flights, changing a reservation on Yelp, all things that can be done right within notifications and not having to jump into an app specifically. Control Center, on the other hand, is now completely customizable. You can change all of the order of these different little shortcuts. You don't have to keep them as they are by default. Unfortunately, you can't remove the ones that you don't use. They all have to be here, but you can completely change the order of them. Still a little bit wonky when you're trying to move these around, but as long as you get them into a good placement, they'll stay just fine, and that could be cleaned up a little bit more as we get closer to release. Things that I don't use very often, like airplane mode and the Wi-Fi slash cellular toggle, all of that I can move down towards the bottom. And I can move things like I do use, like theater mode, up more towards the top. Another improvement that we got has to do with Siri. Not only do we have raise to speak, which is pretty awesome, but we also have support for Siri shortcuts. Siri shortcuts are mostly available on the iPhone. You can create them there. You can create them in all the different apps that will support it. But once they are created, you can use them here on your Apple Watch. I can make a custom uh, shortcut to start my car, lock the doors, turn off the lights, adjust my thermostat, all for when I'm ready to go. I can say Siri, I'm heading out, and you can do all of those actions at the same time. Pretty awesome stuff. Other notables include background audio APIs, audio controller API, Parkinson's research API, and Hindi localization. WatchOS 5 is a major update. There are tons of new features and it's really gonna make the Apple Watch stand out more from the iPhone and grow overall as a platform. Hopefully all these new features will help stead the tide of developers dropping support for Apple Watch apps and we'll see even more come to the platform. Even if we only saw a few small development changes, it should be overall better for the Apple Watch. So what do you guys think of watchOS 5 and all the new features? Which ones are your favorite and which things did not get included that you really wanted to see? Make sure you let us know what you think down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.